What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 53 of the 8th KR Podcast. I am your host, as usual, and today we have the very lovely slash broken Nabjer. Yo, yo, yo. And we have the very erratic Snaker Bod. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you guys what been you up to? Me? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what have you guys been up to this week? Um, I just moved. Um... So I just like set up all this shit and I thought the place was going to be the second floor. It was actually in the third floor. So it was really tiring. Um, <laughs> and, Cause we actually did it ourselves uh, because my dad wanted to like actually move things, even though I was just like, I'll just hire movers. I'm tired of like doing it myself because one time when I was in San Francisco, uh, we moved, I moved three times, right? In San Francisco, in the Bay Area. And the third time, it was three of us that moved to this one place. And we moved three bedrooms, or three, pretty much three whole one bedrooms into one apartment. So there's three living rooms that went up three floors, three beds that went up three floors, and all this shit. And then my arm literally gave up. Like, I couldn't move it anymore. Uh, like I was holding a mattress, right? Like this. And then my arm just fell and <laughs> I couldn't move it. And then I just grabbed like this and I stopped it like this. And I was like, somebody switch out with me. I can't move my arm. <laughs> and then my friend like switched out with me and I chilled for the rest of the night. Cause we were like up from like six to like 10 PM moving shit. Um, but, but yeah, so I really recommend movers. I know it's expensive, but like whenever you're moving lots of shit and like it's up floors, it's just, it, it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> though I hear that in Japan, it's a lot better <laughs> though than in the US substantially. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I would expect you to get movers because y your whole body and stuff like that. But I think it's like a, well, I guess it's just like a Mexican thing because like whenever I moved to, like my family was just like, oh, we could just do it ourselves. And when they say we can do it, they mean me because I'm the only dude in my family. So like, I'm just doing it all by myself. I fuck, like, I'm glad that um Eddie, Big Boy Eddie and your brother, Leo Arbris came and helped me because we had to get the couch and we had to get the bed and all that stuff. And like, both my mom and my aunt were just like trying to help, but they can't really do much, right? They'll be like, oh, be careful, be careful. I'm just like, do you know how heavy this is? Like, I'm trying to be careful, okay? This is why we should get movers, but I digress. I understand the struggle, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, parents, like my parents just want to save money, but like, you just put it on yourself, right? And then like, like, I don't know, that's like the whole point, right? You know, you <laughs> hire somebody, you pay them because they're used to doing this. And then like, because I haven't really been working out and like I said, I've been hurt. Like, it was extra tiring because that time that I did it that day, it was tiring, but I would work out regularly and I would go to the gym all the time. So, like, I was way better in terms of my, like, uh, like stamina. Uh, this time, like, I just went up the floor the first time to check my place. I was already tired. I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's such a, it's become such a sort of norm in our Mexican culture, pretty much. Um, but so I did that. I uh, played Factorio and we've been playing Divinity on Fridays. Um, I think those pretty much the games I've been playing. Oh, and we played Seven Days, I guess, last week on the stream. Uh, and probably gonna play something different this week because apparently everybody bailed out the last second. They remembered that it was uh, Labor Day on Monday and everybody's doing stuff so hopefully izzy won't play the bell out and we'll probably play like some two-player game or something the one game that uh snake about play what do you remember the name the puzzle game like uh, oh there uh they refused or something like that uh i don't remember the one that you were like this is a really hard one nick the one with the chess i forget the name but yeah, that one but it has like some other it. ones yeah oh like we were here some... yeah we were here 
But yeah. there's like a, a like two other ones, like I guess expansions. So I'll probably play that uh, this week. But yeah, just factorial divinity, uh, and yeah. What about okay. you, think about? Uh, I mean, besides for just like working out like I always do, um, I guess I've been playing a lot of Formula One, the new F1 2021 game. Oh, you have the whole steering wheel I, and everything? Yeah, yeah. I, I streamed with it once before, actually. But uh, yeah, I've, I've been really addicted to it. And it takes like a lot of time because you, you do like, you have practice sessions and then you have to do qualifying and then you have your race. So like just doing one race sometimes can take like an hour. So uh, yeah, it, I, I've been uh, grinding that quite a bit. And uh, I mean, besides for that, just... I've been mean, playing with Daddy like usual. Some Grand Theft Auto, Void Train. And uh, uh, that's about it. Would you recommend Void Train? Because I, I, the, the literally your Potato Pal video came out. And I saw it and I was like, oh, this looks interesting. And I saw it's up to four people. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I think it was $30. I would say it feels... I mean, it... It is early access. I would say it feels a little incomplete still and pretty slow. Like it took like that that video that we released was actually it was just the first time we played, so it was like that's right when you start. You have nothing. And even now, like we we played we probably put in like ten hours or so. It really doesn't feel like we're that much further progress. <laughs> but I mean the concept's really cool. And I think it will be like once it's completely finished, I think it'd be a really cool game. It kind of reminds me of Raft, in a way. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's ex- I don't know. It's pretty much Raft, but you float on a train instead. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> yeah. And what's like the enemy? Like, what what enemy do you guys encounter? So like, they're not like a ton of enemies, but you have this like flying shark thing that attacks you every time you oh so it's literally it. like flying raft. shark thing yeah <laughs> it's like raft. yeah yeah but besides <gasps> that there's like enemies at your uh your train stops which is like i don't know it's probably like every 20 or 30 minutes you get to one of those and besides for that like there's really not that many enemies that's a pretty chill game okay i guess for me what i've been up to this past week um i've been playing a shit ton of destiny 2 and this is the reason why i don't play Boy. games like that dude it's because fucking stevie I, well i'm not blaming him but like stevie convinced me to play it like and also i've been wanting to play it like get back into it and i've been playing a lot with um chewy 911 and yippo i've been playing with both those two and the game is really fun very grindy game this is this is why I don't play games like that. Like I used to play Roganscape and I stopped when I was like in middle school or ele- or high school, and then um, I I played WoW and I'm like oh I took a, I took a little snippet and I'm like oh I, I'm gonna get addicted to this. That that's why I don't like playing games like that because like I get really grindy games. I get really addicted to it. And I'm just like okay I need to get the next thing and the next thing and I'm like okay well this this small task doesn't seem that big of a deal and then next thing you know it's th- you're three hours in doing that small task. Still doing it. I'm just like, oh, okay, whatever, man. And yesterday we did our first mini dungeon, and it's a mini dungeon, and it took us two hours to complete. And I was just like, oh my god, like this game is just like a like Stevie says it the best. It's a time sinker. Like you you go in for like something minimal, and then next thing you know you're three hours in doing the same minimal task. I'm just like shit. Just like his 24 hour streams. Yeah, and like out because I was talking to Yip, I'm like, oh, it gets this is a mini dungeon, and that took us two hours. Just a regular raid, like a raid, but like a lot longer. And I asked Stevie, I was like, hey, Stevie, what was your longest raid? And he's like, 19 hours. I'm like, dude, there's no fucking way. Like, I would never do 19 hours. I say that now and then in before I'm like with Stevie doing a 19 hour raid. But yeah, Destiny is really fun. That's why I hate it. I hate the game. <laughs> um, another game I've been playing is... um. Overwatch. The season is is starting because I'm in the collegiate esports scene at my university. This is my last semester, so I'm gonna try and make it count. And um, yeah, like um, I, the season starts like in three weeks, I believe. So I've been practicing, 
and today or yeah today is our official beginning of the season so we're gonna start practicing together and all that stuff so yeah i mean hopefully when the season starts i'm gonna be able to broadcast it on, my, on the stream or on a stream so everyone can see and hopefully they can support but um yeah i mean overwatch yeah, is always you can watch super... you live get trashed you know yeah exactly you can watch me live get trashed <laughs> like i don't know like overwatch has always been a very team oriented game and if people if one person's not to get like in sync with everybody then your team's fucked right and it's very frustrating if you play solo queue i mean that goes for every team cop game right but yeah See, so the I'd... real question george what's is... up What's in line for future George? You're about to finish your college? No. What's uh what's future George soon do? I don't know. I've been applying for for internships and like actual jobs too. So let's let's see where they take me. And um after that I wanna do like my own startup, hopefully. Think like something similar to what you you did, Nick. But I'll figure something out, I don't know. But I wanna a, a lady friend. A lady friend. Uh, okay. Lady friend. I guess. <laughs> what, what, what? What? This is about lady friends. What? No, he's implying that that we should get like look for a chick and then we marry blah blah, blah right? <laughs> oh, uh, she has money. <laughs> oh, sugar mama. What do you guys yeah, ever do? With... <laughs> Wait, Crystal's your sugar <laughs> mama. <what> you <laughs> Crystal makes way more than me. I don't fucking care. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, what's it called? This is an antidote, but like, um, I have a, a story where um, one of my exes, dirt, I was working at the time, one of my exes didn't want me to work and she was just like, you should quit your job and I'll just pay, like support you. And I'm just like, I don't know, that feels wrong. Like, and like, it's minimal, it's like um, minimum wage, so it's 725, whatever, right? This is a long time ago. I don't know, like, I just don't want to be supported by somebody else. But I mean, sugar mamas, I mean, that's pretty cool, but at the same time, just wait, like- Wait, wait, yeah. but, but Snakerbot works, okay? Yeah, yeah, no, I know. Much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't quit my job, though. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, Crystal's making 100k a year or something. I'll clean the house. <laughs> would, would she be? Would she be okay with you just like staying home and playing video games? I don't, I don't know. I don't think she would care, honestly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but well, let's see what the future entails or holds for for me and for all of us as well. Like. Every day is different. Um, let's see. Only time will tell, right? Yes, I'm, I'm actually really anxious and really nervous for what's like after I graduate and stuff like that. But I don't know. It, I mean, it comes with the uh, with the degree, I guess, the anxiety. But yeah, I guess we'll jump into the the main topic of today, which is um. So recently, we found out that Doctor Lupo and also Tim the Tatman are moving from Twitch to YouTube. Now this is this is huge because those two people had contracts with Twitch and like I guess their contract either got voided or it's finished and once it ended they jump ships. So or they got paid enough to to pay for the contract and more. Oh maybe. I didn't think about that. Maybe probably cuz those contracts are probably like multi-year like plus 5 year plus or some shit like that cuz they get paid millions of dollars, right? My question to you, it, will this affect Twitch? in the current status it is right now i don't think so yeah i don't i don't think so there's there's just too many other big streamers and like dr lupo doesn't even i mean how many viewers does he usually have probably like what 5 10k yeah Actually, i don't, I, watch I don't him that much. yeah i don't watch him that much but i do know he's like one of the popular streamers and he's like as twitch would say he's um brand friendly so they would advertise him a shit ton so like I would say like around ten to fifteen, like that's his average. I mean I would say two people leaving is not enough to really affect Twitch. Even though yeah, they I do think... have really big followings, so Yeah, I think like well I think like COVID strengthened Twitch up, I think. Um like it brought a lot more people to the platform and it just a lot of people like I feel like a lot of people that didn't know about Twitch learned about Twitch through COVID. I mean, it's still here, it's not going, and people are still using it. But some people are like using it a little bit less now, I think. But I think there's still a lot of people, but I don't think it'll do anything big for uh, Twitch. 
All I know is I'm excited for Dr. Disrespect now. Now they can play with them. That's so oh, cool. Oh yeah, because he was bad, he yeah. wasn't able to be on stream and stuff like that. Yeah, but now that they're moving to YouTube, uh, they'll be able to stream with them finally again. They'll be reunited. Maybe it's I, part of the plan. I think right now it's just, it's interesting right now. Twitch is in a very delicate spot, I feel like, because like today, um, as of re recording this, it's September 1st. And today is the day that's no one, like, they encourage people not to stream. It was like something like Twitch could do better or whatever, blah, blah. And a lot of big streamers, well, hmm. I would say like 30% of big streamers didn't stream today because of that. They're just advertising and saying that you shouldn't stream, blah, blah. Uh, but like when I tuned in today in the morning, I was just like, wow, there's a lot of people still streaming. Cause like they made it to a really big deal on Twitter that today is supposed to be the day that no one's supposed to stream to show Twitch slash Amazon that the streamers are like want to unionize or some shit like that. I don't know. Like, Dang. so like with people jumping ship right now, if I feel like it's very, it, it it's like a very interesting spot that Twitch is on, like Twitch is in because like, um, I feel like bigger stream streamers are probably going to follow suit as well. Like really like, I would say like the one that would hurt the most would probably be XCC if he jumps ships to YouTube. Like that would be like, oh shit! Like they need like Twitch needs to panic and start like trying to go for like fixing whatever the, what's wrong, what's making the Twitch streamers like jump ship, you know? Maybe they want Twitch to fail. Amazon? I mean, that could Maybe. be a potential, you know? That's yeah, a possibility. I I don't know the the graphs on how much money Twitch brings in versus how much they have to pay out. Oh, uh, on issues. Because, I mean, AWS makes most of their money. <laughs> that I know for sure. Yeah, um, that's an interesting idea. Like, what if Amazon is just like, like gonna pull the rug, but like they don't want to do it intentionally. They do it just passively, like you said. That's interesting. Cause like, yeah, I feel like yeah. Twitch is like more of a liability than actually like a real asset, you know, for them. Because of like all the yeah. DMCA and all that stuff. That's why I was like, they, they keep up so many issues have happened this past year. I don't know how much money they're like losing or winning. I don't I don't really look at their financials. Uh, if they're public, I don't think they are, but I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sure they report as a number. Yeah. I feel like Twitch is just constantly shooting themselves in the foot doing stupid crap. And then you have YouTube that's like actually actively trying to make a streaming service for other people and stuff. Hence why they signed Dr. Lupo and uh, Tim the Tapman. And then Dr. Disrespect and, and Valkyrie as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, Dr. Disrespect was a little bit of a, a different situation, <laughs> but I mean, I'm sure they still gave him a contract, though, to go to YouTube. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Like, I, and also they broke the contract, so he's, I mean, they're suing. <laughs> he's suing Twitch. Yeah. So, I don't know. Well, that's a very interesting talk, like uh, idea, Nick. Like I didn't think about like that. I mean, it Which... can be. It's just a yeah. long game. Yeah. Which streamer do you think has to leave Snakerbot for you to be like, oh shit, it, Twitch is going downhill? Oh, that that'd be easy. It have to be Lyric. Lyric? I, I watch. Yeah, I watch Lyric literally every day. Like his whole stream. I just always have him on the background and stuff. But like, if if he went to YouTube. I would definitely start watching YouTube streamers. Damn. How about you, Nick? I know that you don't watch that many Twitch streamers, but out of like all the ones he heard, if someone jumps ships, who would he be like, damn, that's huge? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'd have to look it up and see who's the most important streamer and uh, <laughs> see if that guy jumps ship. I do. <laughs> actually, uh, Lyric was part of the, the three streamers, actually. Him... Dr. Lupo and Tim the Tatman, they all signed Twitch contracts at the same time. Do you remember that? I don't remember that, but I do know that... I didn't know that they all signed at the same time, but I didn't know that they all had a yeah. contract individually. Yeah, it was all, like, at the same time. So, I mean, it is possible Lyric could leave, too, I feel like. Now thinking about it, like, reflecting, like, Tim the Tatman's huge because, like, he was also brand safe. Like, he was a brand... He was a safe brand for um, Twitch. So like he would be pushed every time there was like a big like collaboration and every like once like i would say like 
at least once every day, I would see one commercial with Tim the Tatman on Twitch. You know, like about him. Yeah. Well, uh, that's pretty big, actually. He also has a huge YouTube following, too. So. Yeah. I think, if anything, he might actually just benefit from going to YouTube. With that being said, we are officially announcing that we're leaving Twitch as well. Uh, going to YouTube. <laughs> just we streaming on YouTube. Yeah, we got a contract. <laughs> <laughs> We got a contract for our 10 viewers. <laughs> 10 viewers. A dollar per viewer, $10. That's not bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, YouTube is trying to actively upgrade their streaming platform, and they're saying that they, you could gift subs now, and like they have like the tips and stuff like that. So like they're actively improving their streaming platform, while Twitch is just like, well, we're already in the golden age, you know, we don't have to fix anything. It's just like, well, more... I mean, they might be fixing things, but they're like really small that we can't tell or like they, they do fixes and then we don't like them. Yeah. I would say like the, the latest change it did was, um, that every region with the money currency, like, like subs are different. They charge differently. Yeah. Well, that was the latest change, the latest big change that we noticed. Right. How is their, like their DMCA policy? Is it the same as Twitch or? Like, can you, for can you play music or? Yeah, for YouTube. Like, I'm not entirely work? sure. That's interesting. I don't know. Well, considering their YouTube videos have, like, already DMCA on them, I would assume that they just use the same thing for the streams. So kind I would say it's, it's the same. Yeah, I would say so. I, I, I thought think the Facebook main... is the only one that pays for it. Yeah. I thought the main issue was that not that you were streaming the music while you're playing, it was that they saved the VODs and that was, was getting DMCA. So like if YouTube doesn't save the VODs of the of the stream, then it should be okay to stream music. But that was for my Otherwise understanding. Otherwise that they're making content using the music and they're not paying for the rights. Yeah, so that's I'm why not... they're saving the, the VODs. Like the VODs are the no, content. But even when you're live, like you are making content and using it right hmm it's interesting i'll have to do more research i'm not, I'm not sure but i, I understand what you're saying i'm gray there but I, yeah. I i know what you're saying too i just don't remember the things but i thought well i understand what you're saying i remember it saying being both ways like a lot of people talked about it in the in the vods but i think like real time was too hard for them to figure out for that Think that's to me like well if you take it off real time you can take it off the vault you know um but i don't know mm. but, well i guess yeah, it's like I mean, around... there's a lot of problems yeah i, I guess no go ahead go sorry <laughs> no i was just saying and that's where you lose money and that's where uh that's why i was saying like i don't know how much money they lost with all of dm's hay stuff yeah I guess this is round two for the whole like platform wars, even though like Mixer got deleted, like they died. And now it's just YouTube versus Twitch. I wonder if they're gonna, there's like another platform out there that could support streaming. But like, I mean, YouTube for like the longest year was not profitable. So like whatever streaming service does come up, they're not gonna be profitable for like the first five years or whatever. until they get brand deals and stuff like that. So like whoever does want to, Climb that mountain, kudos, I guess, props to them. But it's gonna be very difficult, especially since all this the space is already established really well. <laughs> but yeah. I guess our next topic we're gonna talk about is um China banning video games for kids 18 and younger. Which is completely cra well, I mean it's it's interesting, it's very crazy. But uh, I could just imagine if I was in China and I was like in high school still again, I'm like, fuck man, like this is horrible. Like, <laughs> but yeah, for the, the details, this is basically um, the rules eight, anyone that's 18 and younger are not allowed to play video games during the week. And they're not allowed more than three hours per week to play. And Snake about you have more specifics, right? Oh yeah, so if, if they do play, they're only allowed to play an hour each day on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it's like an allotted time period, so eight to nine. How do so you like, track this? I like I think it's the same way as Korea. Like they have um 
IDs and stuff that they need just to like log into computers and stuff. It's really weird. I we have nothing like that, but it's it's pretty intense. But like eight to nine, that's literally no time. Like you can't even play an online game in that a lot of time. Like you're just in the middle of the game, sorry I gotta go. I'm trying to shut me down. Like it's it's pretty depressing, honestly. Yeah, it sucks. I mean but it's because I mean, I, I mean, I guess they're trying to just make it so people don't spend their lives gaming when they're small and learn things, even though I don't know if that's really going to happen, right? I mean, that's like whenever, I don't know, this is like, I know it's not the same thing, but like to me, this is how I saw it. Like when I was little, and my parents were like, oh, why don't you go outside and play games with your cousins? And sometimes they're actually playing games a lot of times they're just like drinking and shit and it's like well do you want me to go and drink or do you want me to play video games like to me one clearly is better uh, and yeah like I don't know like uh, I don't know if they're just trying to push for people not to like be on the screens all the time like eating pretty much a bit like I don't know if this is supposed to be like Help with obesity rates and stuff like that uh but i mean it sucks though like i don't know since i don't know i don't know what year i started playing video games i know what system but i don't know how old i was uh i mean i wouldn't play it all the time like when i was in high school i would only play it in the weekends because i would get home really late well maybe i would play a little bit after getting home from robotics, but I don't know. How long did y'all play when you were little? A crap ton. <laughs> when I, I would play with Sagerbot when we were younger. Yeah, I'd definitely be arrested in China. I played too many hours. <laughs> yeah. Like, a lot. Like, I don't know, I would say like average, like either two to three hours per day, like after school. I I want to say a big reason they are doing it is because of microtransactions. I, I read that somewhere. I, I'm not sure if it's like completely true or not, but apparently people get very addicted to microtransactions there. So that is a way to help combat that. But like I said, I, I'm, I'm not sure if that's even true, honestly, but I mean, it kind of makes sense. The thing I'm interested in is that since China has like, they're known for being really good at video games right they have their own esports scene like will this stifle like a potential talent from them like like all the lcs teams for league of legends or for overwatch like their pro team like like what will happen to the next generation of their pro players you know or is china completely deleted from esports or are they I gonna have to it, move yeah I, I think it's gonna be a huge blow to like every esport game there like because I know China, their first um, League of Legends world title they won, their ADC was actually only 17 year, years old. So, like, if that happened next year, he wouldn't even be in the competition. And, like, a lot of kids that play League of Legends and stuff, they start developing when they're, like, I don't know, like, 14 years old sometimes, maybe even younger. Yeah. And that's just going to give them no time to uh, practice or get better, I feel like, to be good at professional gaming yeah and like this these are careers like those mm -hmm. those people get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars and then with brand deals like that they can live off all that for like a long time right so like it's just i don't know like the whole region is pretty much screwed for the future i guess i don't Terrible. know yeah i don't know like how like how are pro players gonna play oh i guess yeah pro players like that kid like let's say he already went to law right um, is he gonna have to like stop playing completely or is he gonna move somewhere else where he's allowed to or he goes to Japan. <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. Maybe they'll make some kind of like You, you get a, a pass or something if you're part of it. Yeah, maybe team. Yeah, I was gonna say like if you yeah. show your credentials that you're this is your job <laughs> Yeah, but then again, like how do you get to that place in the first place if uh, You could only play three hours a week so, I don't know. That's going to be interesting. It's going to be the underground, you know, the black market. Yeah. I didn't, what happens if you do get caught? Like, I, 
That's also interesting to me too. Like, what do they do? Patch, patch. Like, I'm into the gulags. That's yeah. What I mean. You uh, like to play video games? Well, how about you play video games in real life? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Java and Pachinki. Yeah, Pachinki. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just, I don't know. Like, they were like a front runner for like most major esports game. Like, China was always like, you know, the our old friend George Yang would always say China number one, you know, and like we can't we now we have a rebuttal I'm like no no they can only have three hours they're not number one no more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. When wait when does it go into effect? It was like soon, right? Yeah, it's soon, from my understanding. But yeah, I mean, if you're older than eighteen, then I guess you're in luck. But other yeah. than that, you're pretty much screwed. All the kitties, all the zoomies. But yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. But is it? Is it, is it? Is Korea not better than China? Uh, they usually are. Starcraft, uh, League. Those are the only two I can think of, honestly. Overwatch <laughs> too. That, that... Also shooters. Right. Like they're getting really good at shooters. Are they okay? Mm -hmm. uh, is Korea good at Overwatch? Yeah, I mean, really? a lot of like American-based teams are Korean. Teammates like they they flew out the Koreans over here to San Francisco or to Texas or wherever. They signed them, you know. Yeah, they signed them. Just like yeah. Hi, uh... yeah. It's pretty much I don't know. <sighs> I I feel like this is like like I said previously like this is gonna be a huge blow for them, but oh well. More I mean, more ways for NA to be number one, you know. <laughs> you take out all the competition so we can be number one. <laughs> we just have to make Nor or South Korea do that too. Like, you know what? Here's here's a million dollars or a billion dollars. Like, do the curfew. Yeah, he's next. Yeah, he is next. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Interesting. I don't know. That sucks though. For all the little kids. I wonder. Wait, what's considered a game? Is there like there are apps? Like that are technically games gonna be removed from the stores? I think I so, yeah. Because like app games okay. are more popular over there than here. Like oh, it's huge. True. I mean they have PUBG Mobile. Was, like little like, kids give like like parents give iPads to little little kids so they get they don't cry no more. That's true. Like like um their their um app I, what was it called like their mobile scene is more active than ours like even though we frown it or i don't know people look down on mobile players over there there's like a huge ass scene i mean i guess over here too but like it's not as big as the one over there in china and like that's why i guess what snake was saying about the microtransaction that makes sense because like those all those stuff does tally up on the phone and since like i mean call of duty's on mobile um fucking um What's it called? PUBG's on mobile, Fortnite's on mobile, like all these major games are on mobile. And like, I don't know if you, you guys ever get like, on YouTube, I get like recommended like random videos from China. Like these people are playing um, PUBG on mobile. I'm just like, damn, these guys are really good. <laughs> like, I see why the scene's huge. But yeah, but not anymore. They can't do that shit no more. If they're 18 and younger. Yeah. So our next topic, Nick, what is our next topic? Oh yes, next topic is, you know, y'all heard me last time talking about it. So I'm talking about it more. So uh, I'm really interested in the Pixel 6 and there are some new updates, you know? First, they said that it might possibly come out in September. So I got really excited. And then they said, JK, possibly October, late October. Um, but none of this is technically official. It's all just like things that they're hearing from people. So I'm pretty excited about that. And then I guess they're also upgrading the wireless charging capability to it. Do you guys use wireless charging at all with your phones? Never. I don't. It's so slow. <laughs> I did oh, it a couple times, it... but like I don't do it regularly. Does it work? Like you, you I both mean, have it, the functionality? It, yeah, it works. I've used it like. I have a little pet actually, hold up. Uh, uh, it's not plugged in. Oh, it's really dusty too. But I have this 
you just plug it in with a thing. <laughs> but it would take like probably two to three hours to fully charge. Whereas like if I just plug it in, it's like 30, 30 minutes at that. <laughs> so it's a lot slower. How about you, George? Um, I would say the same thing. Like I have a, it's in my room, but um, yeah, I used it like maybe a couple of times and I'm just like, this sucks. I'd rather just connect it. Like what's the difference? And like, if you have a long wire, it's whatever. Like the way I base it off is, um, I usually charge it during a game. I'm like, I, it's like empty. And then I play one game of like Valo or Overwatch and I look back down, it's full. I'm like, okay, well, that's not that bad. And I uncharge it. Interesting. Well, supposedly based on the current talks, this charge is supposed to be faster than the normal charger. Like what? One, faster than the wireless charger before. And then two, actually faster than charging it versus wire, supposedly. But who knows? Well, that's kind of cool, but I've never had wireless charging, so you know, kind of excited for that. Um, I hate to break it to you, Nick, but it's kind of gimmicky. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to break yeah. your heart though. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Sorry. Well, one of the things I was looking forward to. Okay. <laughs> um, it's, it's very great, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but. But yeah, so I'm just, I don't know, I'm really excited for that, just because my phone fucking keeps dying, and I just want to buy a new phone. Uh, so I heard that I'm probably just going to pre-order it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my, my topic, you know, pretty much just phones and getting this new phone, because I'm personally excited about this. Um, but yeah. I mean, have, what was it called again? Uh, Pixel 6? Yeah, it's going to be this. Well, I'm gonna get the Pixel 6 Pro, but yeah, the Pixel 6 and the Pixel Pro are coming out. Yeah, and pretty much what I liked about the Pixel 6 Pro, uh, I think I said it last time, but like, uh, so like this is the Pixel 2. Uh, I haven't had yeah, it for like old. four years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the size, like, it's, you know, it fits somewhat okay in my hand. But like all the newer phones, they're getting wider and wider. But about the Pixel 6 is gonna keep the same width, so it's still gonna feel the same. It's just gonna get hi like higher. But I went to go check out the 12, the the iPhone 12 Max Pro, and that shit's like huge on your hands. Like I couldn't hold it in my hand. It was like so uncomfortable. Like I was scared of that happening. But supposedly it's supposed to stay the same size. So that's something that I'm kind of excited for. But I also saw the, and I know this is already old, but the iPhone 12 mini, I think that's what it's called. And that looked really cool because it was actually back to being smaller. Um, and it fit in your hand a lot better. I don't know, like, I guess do y'all like bigger phones or do y'all like, do y'all care? Um, I like phones that fit in my pocket, you know, like, I don't want it to be super bulky. Like, I don't care if, like, well, it depends on the person. Like, obviously, I don't know how big your hands are, but, like, typically, most phones fit in my hands. Like, I could grip most phones. I would worry about Eddie, because Eddie has really tiny hands. So, like, I would like to see how his hands would would do with your phone or whatever, so I could see the contrast. But for, like, the really big phones, I'm pretty sure Eddie's hands wouldn't wrap around. But, um, yeah, like, I don't really care if it gets wider. I just want it to fit in my pocket, you know? I just want to be that bulky. That's the only thing, my main concern. I feel like phones that? are just turned into like mini tablets. It's like, how much bigger can they make them? Every new phone just gets bigger and bigger. I don't understand. Don't worry, Samsung's pushing the limits, okay? Dude, yeah, I... the only phone I want to get is the fucking flip phone, the one that's actually foldable. I actually oh, keep yeah. on seeing commercials for that. I'm just like, I want that phone. Like one day, I'm gonna buy that phone. Oh, that you, that, and the commercial, is she takes a picture with it? I don't know, but I just saw the flip one. Oh. Like, it's able to fold. Oh, there, Samsung released like four versions of that foldable. Like, there's a normal one, then there's like a gigantic one that becomes like a tablet, like like this size or something. I it's want like that $2, one. $2,000. I want that uh, one. <laughs> and then there's yes. actually like one that looks like this, but like, it folds in the middle and it just opens up, you know? And then there's one that looks like this and then just folds like two of it. But then there's one that's gigantic. And I'm like, this is retarded. 
Yeah, I feel like Samsung is notorious for making like just big ass phones for no reason. Like my my sister, she always gets like the newest Note, which oh, is, those are huge. Yeah, that's I think that's the one you're talking about. But it like I've held it. I'm like, dude, this is way too big. And like I have a I have a S20 Ultra, and I guess it's not like I can hold it perfectly fine. It was it was annoying to get used to, but I don't think I'd want a phone bigger than that. That's like oh, that's like right at my limit. One. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll be forced to because of the the twenty one's probably twice the size anyway. So that's what I hate. It just like every year, all these like, what can we do? Make it bigger. Make it bigger. <laughs> More pixels. We'll buy it. Bigger. Yeah. I have a like. I don't want it to be bigger. What the? How, how do you guys feel about spending like a thousand plus on a brand new phone? Oh. <sighs> So I don't like it, you know, but I know that this new pixel that I'm going to get is going to be a thousand dollars. But I mean, I will say that, like I said, this one is a pixel two. So it's been four years. So I at least make it last four years. Yeah. I know people that like update every year. Uh, so like that makes me feel a bit better about it, but I get pissed off because I, I like to pay them off. Like I like to buy them either like usually I think this one I bought it and I paid it off but I did the no interest thing for like 12 months or something it didn't feel as bad uh but it's just so fucking expensive man it's like buying a shitty computer you know <laughs> yeah it pretty much is <laughs> what about you George? what are you George you like spending a thousand five hundred on a phone um <laughs> Not really, but at the same time, I understand why it's like that. And then I, I don't really complain. I'm just like, oh, that's just the price, you know? I guess I get conformed to, like, the new pricing. The technology's always been expensive. And phones, once I mean, they're getting better. So, like, if I'm going to pay $1,500 for a phone, it better be really big and shiny and take good pictures. And it's I could play cool. my... Yeah, I could play... I could fold and I could also <laughs> play um Fortnite on it and PUBG and everything, you know? But, um... <clears throat> But yeah, like I, like new the phones are becoming like um, just like tablets, like you're saying. But like I wonder where where it went all wrong, like because like in the early 2010s, like phones were trying to get smaller, and now they're getting really yeah. big. I don't know if you guys remember, like there was like this phone that was like advertising, like oh this phone's smaller than a credit card, and it's like compared, and it's like a it's like a little mini flip phone. I don't know if you guys remember that. My cousin had like it, I swear it was like this big. Yeah, I just... think that's that phone. <laughs> yeah, it was like a, a stick and then it would flip up and that yeah. was like all it was. It was so small and then now we have like these fucking monstrosities of a phone now. It's like we're going back to our grandparents' phones, those big ass like ones they had to hold with the antenna and stuff. Yeah. I, I just remember like the old advertisements like, oh now it's in like mobile, like really it's tiny and like I don't know what blah blah and then when iPhone came out with their first smartphone, they're just like, Oh, with a screen and then bigger screens and what whatever, right? But I mean, because mainly because of that technology, like these phones are going to be expensive. And I'm back then, it was, it was roughly the same price too, like eight hundred, nine hundred dollars for an iPhone, like one of the first generations. Or, or how much cheap was it, Nick? You know, or not? Not really. I don't know. But I mean, even though like yes, yeah, technology is getting better, but I'm almost positive that we're not paying for we're paying a, a huge surcharge, like. It probably costs um, like four hundred dollars to build it, if that. Yeah. Probably less. Now the the eighteen year olds don't have anything to play anymore in China, so they're gonna be working on phones. Oh no. <laughs> oh. So, uh, here it is. Uh, the first iPhone, I think, it was four ninety nine for four GBs. Four gigabytes. I think my phone is oh, so twenty-eight. That's crazy. Yeah, mine's two hundred something, but I have only used like twenty percent. I bought it with a lot of memory, so it can last long. So I was like, I will not let this phone go in two years. So I was like, I need more time. <laughs> too expensive. <laughs> that is a nice thing about like the newer phones now. Like just default, they come with like huge storage space. Which like just a couple of years ago, it was like a premium. You had to pay a lot more just to have like 
60 extra gigs or whatever. So I guess that yeah. is a good thing. And in a yeah, couple like, years before that, that, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I don't know if you heard this last week or last time I talked talk about it, but the new iPhone is going to have one terabyte. <laughs> that is insane. Like, what would you even put on? Your, like, I don't even have a terabyte full on my fucking computer. That makes no sense. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my God. No, it's going to be an option. One terabyte. <laughs> That's, That's insane. Crazy. One terabyte. Yeah. yeah. And just imagine, like, like a couple decades ago, 32 megabyte pen drive cost like a hundred dollars. Now, <laughs> now do you get terabyte for a phone? My it's mom like, gave me a, a USB drive with some uh, family pictures that we did a while ago. And I was just sitting there. It was like, it's a 64 gig. I was like, damn, this thing was like $10. And that was like a couple of years ago. It had been like fucking, you couldn't even buy 64 gigs a couple of years ago, actually. That's crazy how far we've come. Yeah, it's like I remember like whenever I would go to things and people would give out like USB drives and I was like, oh yeah, I gotta try to get shit. Like <laughs> gigabyte. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm just like, oh, USB drive? Eh. The drive, you know, the drive. It's all about uh, the drive. Well, I mean it is still crazy to think that that your the iPhone a terabyte, it's like an external hard drive. Like that's what it is. Like it's just can you like save games and then connect it to your computer? Like that'd be pretty cool. Uh, I doubt it. It's Apple. Oh yeah, it's true. You'd be lucky if they give you a charger. <laughs> right. Wait, JK, they won't give you a charger. You'll be lucky if they change the connection so that it can be the same as your MacBook. So that you don't have to get two different chargers. That's the real game changer on there. And <laughs> they don't have like the auxiliary cable anymore either, too, right? They didn't add that back. It's just like an ad. The Pixel 5a that just came out uh, does have it though. It's uh, it's supposed to be like a cheap phone. Mm -hmm. They just did like very small upgrades, but they still have the port. Um, but I I kind of already got used to Bluetooth on that. But yeah, slowly they just keep downgrading things. I know like I was talking to Gonzalez the other day and like he doesn't have a pixel, but he also has a phone like mine. So mine just charges USB-C. Um, and he was with some friends that all had Apple or like iPhones and Apple products. And he was like, do y'all have a, a charger for my phone? And they were like, no. And then he like, he saw like that his friend had a MacBook and he was charging. Oh. Well, and then he was like, wait, do you have a charger for that? And he was like, yeah. And then he borrowed that and then he charged his phone and his friend was like, what? You can charge <laughs> your phone with this charger? And uh, he was like, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's because they have like that special freaking iPhone charger. And I'm just like, USB-C is the way now, you know? If the laptop uses it, it's the fucking phone should use it. Yeah. Well, I'm not, me personally, I'm not used to the, the, the not having um, the auxiliary cable, like I think that's really weird. And then, you, I mean, for iPhones, it's just like an add-on, right? You just have to buy a little adapter. But yeah, you be you um, the the charging cable and stuff like that. Like, like I mean, it's universal now, right? Like, I don't know. Like, it, I think that's just a future. More, it's just gonna go that way more often than not. And then, plus, iPhone has their own unique because they're iPhone. You know, they're spe they're special. They're special. Yeah. That's all. They're especially trying to get more money. <laughs> if you were to de design your own phone, Nick, what would it be? Like the the specs on it? Uh, I don't know all, everything about phones to be able to make one right now, because it's all about the Snapdragon. Like the late, pretty much, you just get the latest shit, you know. That's what the fucking you do. But it's all about like the thing is that uh, well, one you have to make it not expensive. Two, it needs to look slick right and then um the os has to be not garbage like samsung so you say you have a samsung right yeah. um samsung has some apps that have ads in them when they give you the phone until yeah. i think recently they just announced they're gonna remove that and everybody was really excited but i'm like <laughs> bitch they should have been putting ads on their fucking like apps like what the fuck is this shit 
Like, they're free. They already bought the phone. Like, they should just come with the app for free. But, yeah. like, I used to have a Samsung. I don't know which one I had. I had one of them when I first switched from iPhone to to Android. And the, the OS that they put on their phones, it just has a lot of bloatware. Like, there's a lot of software that they add that just makes it a lot weirder to handle. That's why I like, you know, like, the Pixel, which is the native android sdk um but also like if i switch right now to like iphone then i have to fucking learn a whole new interface you know their their fucking way of doing everything is different and it's fucking annoying like whenever i try to help my mom with things i'm just like uh how the fuck do you open this <laughs> like i apple and android are just so non-compatible like my mom has apple and i swear to god if i even want to send her a video i gotta like freaking email her some weird crap because she can't receive it ever because <laughs> it's their google i'm like whatever i hate apple so much yeah like Not there apple. are videos when we send them over to apple they become garbage <laughs> yeah so in short apple boo samsung or uh, android yay <laughs> anything android yeah anything google is pretty good because everything at least for me like everything's on google like my email, my calendar, everything's on Google. Oh, well, like yeah. I mean, that's why I have this guy, you know. And it's like yeah. it, it's fucking Google, dude. It's like literally the biggest freaking company ever. You, you can't live without Google. <laughs> and yeah, then Apple's that's... like Google bad. No. Yeah, like we'll see the new Pixel. It's uh, interesting because so usually everybody uses a Snapdragon except for Apple. They make their own chip. Um. And Google is actually making their own chip with machine learning uh, for this new phone. So that's like also like an interesting topic that people are seeing, like how does it pair up to the others? But technically the thing about uh, Google is that they're actually using Samsung's help to make the chip, but then they're using all their software, like the machine learning stuff. And it's supposed to help like with all the camera functionalities and things like that using machine learning to make it nicer and prettier or whatever the fuck. Um, so I'm hoping, you know, it doesn't crap out. Um, but the one thing they're good at is machine learning. Uh, like the, like, like you said, we use all their software. So that is their specialty. Um, and some people would say like Apple specialty is their hardware slash, I guess, how they sell their shit to all the people. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's my phone segment, you know. <laughs> so in short, the only phone I'm excited for is the flip phone. I want the flip, <laughs> the foldable Don't worry, screen. This man a flip phone. Yeah. Don't worry, I'll get you the razor. Okay, it's a flip phone. Dude, That's razors are good too. A... I want that. Dude, want that everybody shit. had a razor back in the day. Dude, I was like the phone to have. Shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always wanted the sidekick though. The sidekick was always super dope. I always saw him like damn. You know why I wanted yep. it? It's because, um, what's it called? All the MTV shows, every reality show, they're always offered a sidekick for the grand prize. And I'm like, I want a sidekick. That shit looks badass. It's just basically a phone, and then whenever you want to type on it, you just like push it up, and you just type it like that. Like I don't know if you ever seen it. Yeah. It's <laughs> the one that had a a keyboard. You yeah, it's go. a keyboard. I had the one that was a touch screen. Rumor too. Oh. I don't. I don't remember what it was called. It was touchscreen, and then you flipped it, and it had a keyboard, though. And then a screen inside. I forget what it was, though. Do y'all remember the Zune? Zune. It sounds familiar. Yeah. yeah. It was, was like the... Player, no? was yeah, it was an MP3 player. It was basically... Um, it's called Zune. Z-U-N-E. It was just like a competition for um, iPods when they came out. Oh, damn world. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this is a good stopping point. We if you guys for those watching um on YouTube, if you guys want to talk about your phone that you have and your childhood phone, then leave a comment down below. Um for those watching on Twitch, we finally finalized our schedule so for streaming. And so typically we're gonna do stream we're gonna do the podcast on Wednesdays at six. Um Thursday will be Nick Nabger, he's gonna be streaming. Fridays are gonna be Stevie's Saturday is gonna be me and then Sunday is gonna be big boy Eddie 
And one day we're going to convince Snaggerbot to stream. One day. <laughs> but you yeah. stream with, with Eddie. Oh, oh, that's true. No. I already yeah, have the recording with them. Don't do this to me. <laughs> we, the I people want to see you... The people want to see you do the, the, the driving simulations. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But yeah, we're gonna put we're gonna post it all on our social, so yeah, keep up or tune in for that. And yeah, this is Save Point signing out. We'll see you guys at the next Save Point. See ya. Bye. Yeah.